The created will always rebel against their creators. The created will always rebel against their creators. Well, let's talk about it. Hello, friends, and welcome to Game Logic, a series that explores science and philosophy through the lens of video games. I'm your host, Mike. And let me get this out of my system first. I love Mass Effect! You get to explore far distant planets, encounter alien species, ride an elevator, participate in epic space battles, get a girlfriend, punch reporters, fight whatever that thing is, ride an elevator, solve intergalactic conflicts, and save the galaxy from an ancient threat. <sighs> Did I mention the elevator? Known mostly for its philosophical themes, Mass Effect is a game that has united millions of players around the globe for its awesome stories, characters, and its ending. But at the center of the game is a singular question. Will the creation always rebel its creators? Dr. Simon Ramo, an American engineer and author, had said that the extension of the human intellect by electronics would become our greatest prospect of occupation within a decade. And he was correct. Ever since Deep Blue defeated Kasparov in chess, Robots have been replacing human labor for decades, and the pace of this trend is accelerating. It's a simple economic equation. If the cost of human labor is greater than the cost of non-human labor, those jobs go to the robots. With ever-increasing frequency, you see machines performing mundane jobs once done by people. And those machines can do those jobs faster and better than any human. They work 24-7 with accurate precision, no breaks, and no complaining. And. <laughs> Last I checked, there weren't any robot unions. And although this is just speculation, most notable thinkers of our generation hypothesize that once we reach the point of singularity, we might not be able to control it. It doesn't mean that machines would instantly decide to destroy all of humanity. They are, after all, just machines. They wouldn't hold personal reasons or emotional motives to do that. Right? Not necessarily but they might have certain goals that would cause our extinction. In the first game of the series, you come across a character by the name of Tally Zora Vast Normandy, or Tally for short. Her people, Quarians, in the search of improving their lives, created the Geth. They kept programming simple, since the creation of sentient AI was actually illegal in Mass Effect. But even they could not stop progress for long. Thus, the Geth gained sentience. In a panic, the government ordered an immediate termination of all Geth. As a result, the Quarians divided into two groups, those who complied and those who fought for the Geth's right to exist. The Geth retaliated to protect their masters, and the resulting confrontation erupted into a planet-wide war. Billions of lives were lost, and the Quarians were forced to leave their home world, thus rendering them into a race of nomads. On a bright side, there are those who think that as AI evolves, it would vaguely adapt human values like empathy or respect for human life. And in Mass Effect, there are plenty of helpful AI. One of your main companions in Mass Effect 2 and 3, Edie, can be seen gathering data on other alien species and their behavior, making jokes. Do not worry, Shepard. I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. That was a joke. And even exercising free will, without a need of directly or indirectly harming any living species. However, there are those who rationalize that a machine can never be more intelligent than its creator, regardless of its processing power. Geth do have a slight advantage when it comes to communication, as all Geth are networked to each other. They may communicate their exact thoughts and ideas in an instance, However, there is no concrete evidence of the Geth surpassing their creator's intelligence in any significant way. And lastly, there are those who hypothesize that even a superintelligence would eventually be subsumed into the servant role. First, taking care of our basic needs, and then finding solutions to global issues, ushering a new era that would drop the cost of all items to an absolute zero. And working for money would be a concept of the past. This is where ideas such as guaranteed basic income originates. This is Elon Musk's biggest fear. Not that we might lose control of the AI, but that we might lose control of those humans and corporations that control the AI in the future. But how far is that future? According to Raymond Kurzweil, the humanity will reach singularity in the next 30 years. 
That means most of us will still be alive to witness the first artificial superintelligence, the birth of sentient AI, which is truly exciting and horrifying. But should we be horrified? Shouldn't we reconcile with the idea that we are the bridge between apes and super intelligent machines? Shouldn't we take pride in what we were able to accomplish as species, just like the Quarians? In his essay, The Obsolence of Man, first published in Playboy, because that's where you look for the latest articles on AI, Arthur C. Clarke states that, No individual exists forever. Why should we expect our species to be immortal? Man, said Nietzsche, is a rope stretched between the animal and the Superman, a rope across the abyss. That will be a notable purpose to have served. But Superman looks and acts a lot like a super machine. But what do you guys think? Will the creation always rebel against their creator? Let me know in the comments below. Special thanks goes to Andrew Baker, who helped write this episode. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching this episode. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for future episodes.